TV KPM. Oh, what a nice feeling. The sun, the air, the waters, and the birds. Oh, hello, Che Guliana. Hi. Wow, you seem to be enjoying the sun, the yep. sea, and the sand, aren't I am. you? Wow, and you're looking good in your beautiful hat there. Yes. But I have a suggestion. Uh huh. Why don't we go and travel somewhere else? Where to? Mm, perhaps. To the jungle! Oh. Ah, what do you think about that? Oh, wow, I've never been to a jungle before. You've never been to a jungle? You, no, definitely not. Well, we have the equipment ready here. You have the compass? I have a compass there. There's a hat here. Do you think we should go? Yeah, it's something new. Maybe we should try it. Yeah, let's go. Sure, and my sure. friends at home, you should join us to the jungle right now. I'm going to so put I'm my hat on. This here, yep. And are you ready, Teacher yep. Leanna? Let's, let's go. go. Let's go, everyone. Do I hear insects? No. Do I hear sound of birds? No. Of course not. I'm back in the studio right now and you are watching Did It TV KPM. I'm no longer the in the jungle. And today, for our upper secondary slot, we are learning English for Form 4. And my name is Hanif Sean. I love to be in here. It's so much nicer. And of course, the jungle is still beautiful. But you must be wondering why were we going to the jungle, right? You have seen our teacher's profile today, which is Teacher Liana. How are you, Teacher Liana? Hi, honey. I'm good. You're looking good in green as well. I, I'm getting a bit of hint about a jungle yeah. feel here. Yeah. And Teacher Liana, it's not just the both of us today. We also have our interpreter, which is Teacher Saiful. How are you, Teacher Saiful? Looking fantastic there. Oh, yes, you are. All right. And Teacher Liana, it's not just the both of us, it's not just the three of us actually in the studio today. We do have two other pupils online joining us. Can you wave at us here? Oh, there they are. And Teacher Liana, if I can get your help to introduce our pupils online. Yeah, sure. So we have two of our friends here. First up would be Adriana. So say hi, Adriana. And then we have Aisha. So Aisha, if you could just wave to everyone. Oh yes, so mm -hmm. uh, there you go, two of our pupils from MRSM Sungai Besar and yes. Teacher Liana. I'm wondering why did we actually get to the jungle? What, is, what has that got to do with what we are going to learn together today? Okay, talking about jungles, here's our topic for today. It's globe trotting, walking the Amazon, so hence the jungle theme. So we're going to go to the Amazon. This is actually lesson 56 taken from Unit 5, Globe Trotting, And for viewers at home, you can refer to our textbook, Full Blast Plus 4, pages 67 until 69. Here's our learning standards for today. First would be Main Skill Reading 3.1.2, where we understand specific details and information in extended text on a wide range of familiar topics. And the second complementary skill would be Speaking 2.1.4, where we explain and justify our own point of view. Here's our learning objectives for today. First would be to identify specific information in a text, and this is to do with reading. And then for the second would be to elaborate on the topic of a reading text. So this is for speaking. Okay, the word travelling. I know lots of you get excited when you see or when you hear the word travel. So I'm going to ask our friends some questions, okay? The first one, do you like travelling? So anyone would like to answer that? Can I go first, teacher? Yeah, sure. 
So, I like traveling, of course. And why? This is because I found traveling to be some sort of meditation and also escapism from this so-called reality. Ah, so a way for you to escape somehow. Okay, I love, thank I love you. that answer. Yes. I love that answer. Don't we all? Yes, that is true. Okay, so um, Aisha, would you like to um, share with us what do you think about travelling? Yes, I really love travelling. It's because I get to see many beautiful sceneries, various types of animals, different shape of geography around the world, and I can visit many interesting places, learn new culture, at the same time admire the amazingness of God's creation. I see. So you get to appreciate things, people, culture, and of course, for you to learn as well, right? Okay, thank you. And I have a second question over here. Hmm. What places would you like to travel to in the world and why? So anyone? Who would like to go first this time? Me again? Okay. The places I like to travel in the world is New Zealand. This is because New Zealand is popular for its mesmerizing features. Mm -hmm. And although some people like to take pictures of holiday places, I love to just live in the moment and appreciate the beauty. And not to mention that I can just simply Google the pictures whenever I want one. Mm, so New Zealand. <laughs> Very good choice. Okay. okay, and then Aisha, what about you? Well, for me, mm -hmm. I think I would like to go to Australia. Mm -hmm. It's because it's famous with their wildlife and nature. Uh, and see, when I was then, I went to Australia for 10 days and I got to see a lot of beautiful scenery and wildlife. So I would like to experience the same thing here. Ah, going to Australia. Very interesting, yes. I'm sure Aisha loves the koalas and the kangaroos over there. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> Both of you, okay. So to Australia and New Zealand. Over here, I have some pictures of Australia and New Zealand. So can you girls tell us, um, how would you describe the scenery here? I like mm -hmm. to describe the first picture. Oh, the first um, one. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I like to just use only one word, which is relaxing. Ah, if we relaxing. look closely, the main colours there are blues and green, and it and those colors are said to be the best color to relax to. Mm, blue and green, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Okay, what about you, Aisha? How would you describe it? Uh, I would like to describe the second picture. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't have. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I don't have a long sentence, also a short one. I will describe it as freedom. It is because the white blue ocean and the cloudy sky make me feel like I can fly freely. So I would like to describe it as freedom. Ah, freedom. So both words I think matches the pictures uh, best. Don't you think so? I agree. It's freedom. Mm -hmm. It's also a sense of liberation, I feel, for the second photo. Yeah. Right. Okay, right. And so, what, what do you think about their performances? What you, uh, about answering three questions? Would you like to give them stars or scores? I would definitely give them a three over three. A three over manage, three yeah. for the both of them, for all three questions that they yes. answered. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. I think our students online are very brilliant here. And of course, we're going to take a short break because Teacher Liana and I, we're going to travel a bit more where we'll take all of you together. So take a short break. Do not go anywhere. Stay tuned with us on DDAT TV KPM. KPM. And welcome back to Do That TV KPM. So now we're back here. We're not traveling anymore, but our teacher today, Teacher Liana, in this upper secondary slot for English, she'll be taking us 
on some journey away, which is globe trotting, walking the Amazon. Interesting, Titiliana. Shall we start with with walking the Amazon here? Yeah, sure. Okay, now we are going to focus on the topic walking the Amazon. For viewers at home, you can um, find the article in page 68 of Full Blast Plus 4. Okay, we, as we could see, there's an article over there. So I would like the help of our friends to read it out loud for us. Okay, who would like to go first? I'd like to go first. Okay, sure, Adriana. So, when British explorer Ed Stafford announced that he wanted to become the first person to walk the 4,000 mile length of the Amazon from source to sea, pe most people say that he could not do it. They say there was no way any human could survive such a long and dangerous journey. This made Stafford even more determined to prove them wrong. Okay, thank you, Adriana. The next one. In April 2008, Stafford set off with another tracker who returned home after three months. Stafford continued and was joined by a Peruvian forester, Cho, who stayed with him until the end. Stafford had estimated that it would take him a year to complete the journey. However, by the time he reached the Atlantic Ocean on the other side of the continent, he had been walking continuously for 860 days. Throughout the expedition, he had to carry 40 kilos on his back which required a lot of strength. A lot of this week was batteries for his satellite video phone and laptop, which he used to write a blog of his experiences. Okay, thank you, Aisha. Now we have the next paragraph. Along the way, Stafford faced many dangers and challenges. He and Joe often had to cross swamps and rivers with only small inflatable rafts. They came across giant poisonous snakes electric eels, jaguars, crocodiles, monkeys, and many dangerous insects. They were continuously attacked by mosquitoes, and Stafford was stung twice by scorpions during the journey. A fly buried itself into his head, and, and he also suffered a tropical skin disease. Sometimes they were forced to, f to survive by eating whatever they could hunt or find. Their diet consisted of plants, piranha fish, wildcats, and even tortoises. Okay, thank you, Adriana. For the next one. Some of the dangers they faced were from humans. The maps they used were often unreliable, and on several occasions, they arrived at areas to get supplies and found that logging companies had completely cleared them away. There were problems with the native people too. Several isolated communities living in the jungle saw Stafford and Cho as a threat and chased them with knives and guns. On one occasion, they avoided an attack by agreeing to pay the community chief to be their guide. And then the next one. Many people found it difficult to understand why Stafford wanted to put his life in danger. He explained that no one had achieved anything like it before. That was a good enough reason for doing it. Moreover, he hoped his expedition would make people more aware of the destruction of the rainforest. Sometimes wanting to be a record breaker and the need for adventure can push people to incredible achievements. If that can also help a good cause, it makes it even more remarkable. Okay, thank you, Adriana. So we've heard our friends read the article out loud. So first we have read the article and for the next activity, we are going to look at each paragraph. So when we look at each paragraph, we are going to try and identify the main idea. Okay? So this is paragraph one. What do you think is the main idea? Anyone would like to try? I think mm -hmm. the first paragraph tells that there's a British explorer named Ed Stafford that wanted to walk the Amazon, even though people say that he could never do it. Aha. Uh -huh. So let's have a look at the answer. Yep, it centers on Ed Stafford wanting to walk the Amazon. Thank you, Adriana. That's a good job. Well done. Okay, for the next one, the next paragraph. Anyone? Uh, I would like to answer. Mm -hmm. um, I think this paragraph tells about how Ed Stafford faced the difficulties at the start of his journey and how the walk takes longer time than what he expected. Okay, 
So yes, that's the answer. So he began to face difficulties and he also had someone going with him. Okay, so the difficulties like what Aisha has mentioned about it took longer than the estimated time. And also he had to carry something really heavy on his back. Okay, so thank you Aisha. Next one would be this. Anyone would like to try? For the third paragraph, I believe that Stafford and Joe went through many challenges and dangers, especially from animals and insects. Aha, uh -huh. animals. Yes, that's the main idea. This paragraph highlights the challenges that he faced and mostly from animals. So if you could see in the text, there's animals such as eels, jaguars, crocodiles, monkeys. So all of them are quite dangerous. Okay, thank you. Next one. Anyone would like to try? Well, for me, okay. uh, I would like to try. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, this paragraph clearly tells about challenges that as the fit need to face not just from animals, but also from humans. Such as example, the logging companies clear all the supplies and native people saw them as a threat. Okay, so it's challenges as well. But the focus now is on humans. So before it was animals, now it's humans. They were even chased with knives and guns. Okay. And we've got the final paragraph, if anyone would like to try. For the final paragraph, I'd say that it tells that Stafford explained his reasons um, for walking the Amazon and his hopes for his expedition to make a good cause. Aha, uh -huh. so let's have a look. Yeah, the reasons why Ed went on the expedition and among those highlighted would be um, more aware of the destruction of the rainforest and then there's nobody who had achieved anything like that before. And also it's for a good cause, it helps a good cause. So yeah, that's the main idea. So thank you for your answer. Okay, so for um, our identifying the main idea activity, since both of you did a very excellent job, I would give it a 5 over 5. Oh wow, well done. 5 over 5 to our pupils online right here. Yeah, because yep. they managed to answer and they managed to identify what's going on in each paragraph. Good job, very analytical, very analytical. Okay, so now, for viewers at home, it's time for us to do activity B. So for activity B, you can find this in our book, page 68. Okay, first we have read the paragraphs in which we uh, read the text quickly, we've done that. And then for the second, in order for us to find the best title, we have identified the main idea for each paragraph. So when we have identified the main ideas for each paragraph, it would make and it would lead us to choose the best title. Okay, so first we have the option A, exploring the Amazon at Stafford's amazing journey across the Amazon River. B, Amazon adventure. One man tries to save the rainforest. And C, walking the Amazon. The incredible story of Ed Stafford. Okay, so girls, which one would you choose? Would it be A, would it be B, or would it be C? If you could just put up your answers. Hmm. So both selected C. So both of you selected C. So now let's have a look. Okay, so this is definitely the title. Walking the Amazon, the incredible story of Ed Stafford. Now, could anybody tell me why is this the title? I think that C is the title because in the first paragraph, mm -hmm. it is stated that he wanted to become the first person to walk the Amazon. Mm -hmm. Okay, the first person to walk the Amazon. And what about you, Aisha? For me, this answer is C. Because in the second paragraph, it's, uh, I just mentioned that he had been walking continuously for 860 days. It means that he is walking, not jumping, running or crawling. So I answer C. 
I see. It's not. It's definitely walking. It's not crawling. It's not jumping. <laughs> A very good reasoning. Okay, now let's look at the reason why we come to choose C as the answer. The most obvious one, it's because yes, Ed Stafford wanted to walk the Amazon. Okay, there's lots of evidence that you can find in the text. So again, viewers at home, as we are reviewing why we choose C as the answer, you can refer to the text in page 68. Okay, first, um, this is the first um, clue that we get as being given by both Aisha and Adriana. He wanted to become the first person to walk the 4,000 mile length of the Amazon from source to sea. You could find this in paragraph 1. Okay, it stated the main reason of why Ed Stafford wants to walk the Amazon. And then, second, there's another clue which we can find in paragraph 2. He had been walking continuously for 860 days. So like what Aisha said, it's walking and walking and walking. Even more so, it is more than the time that he had estimated. Okay? Next one, the clue would be in this sentence or this phrase, Stafford faced many dangers and challenges. So we look at the title, The Incredible Story of Ed Stafford. This one would actually lead to the incredible part of the story. So despite many dangers, despite many challenges, he still went on the walk. Okay, so again, viewers at home, this next clue, we can find it in paragraph 3. Next one, we have the words or the phrase, several isolated communities living in the jungle saw Stafford and Cho as a threat and chased them with knives and guns. So this also points to it being incredible. Despite facing dangers, despite having people chasing you with knives and guns, he still went on the journey. That is true, that is true, Ticheliana. Mm -hmm. And I believe both our pupils online have selected the best title for this story. Would you like to give them scores or marks here, Ticheliana? Okay, since um, this is quite a huge task, meaning they have to think of the reasons and they were the ones who gave me these phrases. I think both of them deserve a 10 over 10. A 10 mm -hmm. over 10, that's perfect marks for the both of you. Yes, you can clap for yourself. And Teacher Liana, I have a question for you. Yes, Looking sure. at all these challenges that Ed Stafford went through when he was walking mm -hmm. the Amazon, would you walk the Amazon? Um, <laughs> I think, yeah, I would like to give it a try. Because there aren't that many people in the world who could proudly say, I've walked the Amazon. Wow, yeah. I believe <laughs> so our teacher Liana is such a courageous lady. I don't think I'll be able to walk the Amazon. I have a lot of fears against snakes, against people. But guess what? Definitely with great motivation, one can achieve great dreams. We're going to take a break. Do not go anywhere. Stay tuned with us on d -Date TV KPM. KPM. Welcome back on d TV KPM. Now for the upper secondary school slot, we are learning English and the topic today is very interesting which is globetrotting, walking the Amazon. With me is teacher Liana who has been taking us into the jungle. Are we still going to be in the jungle right now, teacher Liana? Yes, we will definitely explore it deeper. <laughs> okay, we're all excited. Shall we continue with our lesson? Yes, yeah, sure. The next one is reading for specific information. So you might wonder, what is reading for specific information? Well, in classrooms, 
you would might uh, sorry you might encounter reading comprehension texts where you have articles and then you have to answer several questions about the article so that is when we read for specific information we look at the text and we will try to answer and we will try to figure out what the question requirement is okay so this is reading for specific information so for viewers at home you can refer again you can refer to the text in page 68 okay i've got some tips which i think is very useful for everyone should we want to read for specific information so would anyone like to try and read aloud the tips for us uh, may I? Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, first, read this question carefully. Identify the section in the text where the answer is found. Mm -hmm. Two, eliminate the wrong options. Three, look out for synonyms, words which have the same meaning. Okay, thank you, Aisha. So I think these three tips is very important each time you want to identify specific information. For example, first would be for you to read the question carefully. What does the question want? Okay, and after you've done that, identify the section in the text where the answers is found. Is it in paragraph one? Is it in paragraph two? So ask yourself that. And we will do that after this. I will show you how, don't worry. And number two, we need to eliminate the wrong options. Because normally, when you have these questions, you would have three or four options for you to choose from. So when you read, you look at the options and then, oh, you think this is definitely not the correct one. So you eliminate it earlier. So it won't confuse you. And then third would be for you to look out for synonyms. Synonyms are words which have the same meaning because, you know, sometimes in the text, the words may appear differently in the questions. So synonyms might give you a clue to where the answer is. Okay, so that's the tips. Keep these tips in mind when we want to do the task. Okay, so again, we are, uh, we are like what I said before, we are going to refer to page 68 for the text and page 69 for the questions. Okay, this is activity C found in page 69. So viewers at home, let's do the questions together and you can refer to both page 68 and 69. Okay, this is task C. The instruction reads, read again. So you have to read the text again and answer the questions. You could choose either A, B, C, or D. So this is question number one. When Stafford said that he was going to walk the Amazon, people thought that A, he was strong enough to achieve it. B, he would die if he tried to do it. C, he was brave enough to try. And D, if he was determined, he would succeed. So Adriana and Aisha, which would you choose as the answer? So both selected B. He would die mm -hmm. if he tried to do it. Hmm. Okay, so let's look at the answer. Yep, hmm. definitely B is the answer. Well so done to both Adriana and Aisha. Okay, so um, girls, why would you say it's B? Would you like to explain to us? Yes, mm -hmm. I'd say the answer is B because in the first paragraph and mm -hmm. also the second and third line, mm -hmm. it is stated that they say there was no way any human could survive such a long and dangerous journey. Mm -hmm. And I believe this phrase is similar to mm -hmm. the answer B, which is he would die if he tried to do it. Ah, so that's a very good reasoning that you gave us. So this is the clue. There was no way any human could survive such a long and dangerous journey. Okay, so let's look for viewers at home. Let's look at the text. When we identify, we need to make sure that the answer is here. So it would be here. 
take it just a while. And we'll get the red color highlight. There you go. Yep. There was no way any human could survive such a long and dangerous journey. So that would be the supporting statement to this answer. Yes, correct. And synonyms. Remember for the tips, there's the synonyms. Yes. No way any human could survive, meaning they would die. So that's what I meant when we look at the tip for you to identify the synonyms. Okay, so this one is equivalent to die. Right. Yep. Okay, so that's good job well done to both of you. Next, we have question number two. What is not true about Stafford's journey? A, it took him longer than he expected. B, a Peruvian was with him for most of his journey. C, the batteries he had to carry weighed 40 kg. And D, the person he started off with didn't complete the challenge. So girls, which one would you pick? If you could just hold up your answers. So both selected C. The batteries mm. he had to carry weighed 40 kgs. Are you sure? Okay. <laughs> Let's okay. see whether we have supporting evidence. Yep, it's C. So would anyone like to tell us why it's C? I'd like to try. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I found the answer in the, par in the second paragraph, mm -hmm. the fourth and fifth line, it is stated that he had to carry 40 kilos on his back and a lot of this weight was his batteries for the video phone and laptop. Hence, it is said that the batteries not specifically weigh 40 kilos, instead, the batteries took up most of the weight. Ah, so yeah, it could be a bit confusing, right, Adriana? So, um, as what Adriana stated, the option C, the batteries weight 40 kg, but in the text, it is stated that a lot of this weight was batteries, a lot, but it's not entirely 40 kg. So good job for identifying this one, Adriana. There was a tricky one, I think. Yeah, it is. Okay, um, now let's look a little bit deeper. What about A? Why is A not the answer? Anyone could tell us? The A is not the answer because mm -hmm. uh, in the second paragraph, third and fourth line, he said that, however, by the time he reached the Atlantic Ocean on the other side of the continent, he had been walking continuously for 860 days. Mm -hmm. uh, as the first estimate that he need to take a year, but it took, it's dragged to 860 days, which is true, it took him longer than he expected. So the A, so A is not the answer of the question. Yes, A is not the answer because the un the question is actually something that's not true. Meanwhile, statement A is true. So that's why again, re um, remembering the tips I have given you, first is for you to read the question carefully. Okay, could somebody tell me why is B wrong? B is mm -hmm. wrong. Because in the second paragraph and also the second sentence, it starts with Stafford continued and was joined by a Peruvian forester Cho who stayed with him until the end. And from the answer B, the a Peruvian mentioned is Cho and Cho stayed with him for most of his journey and until the end. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the statement is actually correct, right? Okay, thank you Adriana. And we have got the final statement D. Could someone tell us why is it not the answer? D. The person she started off with didn't complete the challenge. This option is a bit tricky. If uh, you look at the second paragraph, at the start of the paragraph, you see that Stafford set off with another tracker, mm -hmm. means that he had been with other tracker, but the past tracker returned home after three months. So the person he started off with didn't complete the challenge is true, which is not the answer of the question. Ah, so that's a bit tricky as well because there's two trackers, so you need to really read the text. Okay, thank you Aisha for sharing with us. So viewers at home, this is the second paragraph. So the answer to this would be this one. Okay, this lines. 
sweet up stays. until this. Uh, a lot of this he weight had to was. carry 40 yep. kg on his back, which, requi which required a lot of strength. A lot of this weight was batteries for his satellite video phone and laptop. A yep. lot of this weight and not the entire exactly. weight of the back. Mm -hmm. So viewers at home, this is where you find the answer for question number two. Okay, next, moving on. This is question number three. What was the cause of Stafford's skin disease? A, a scorpion, B, a fly, C, his diet, and D, it is not clearly mentioned. So girls, which one's your answer? So both answered D. I felt squeamish when I was reading this part in the text. <laughs> It is Still not disease. clearly mentioned, answer D. Ah, is that the correct answer, D. Juliana? Okay, let's have a look. Yep, it's not clearly mentioned. Hmm. And I wonder why. So maybe could you girls explain it to us? Well, well after, after I read the second, uh, the third paragraph, mm -hmm. I read and it, I couldn't really find the answer. But it has a, a words that have the same words in the question. Mm -hmm. So, in the, uh, third, uh, in the third paragraph, the third line, we see that uh, they were continuously attacked by mosquitoes and Stafford was stung twice by the scorpions during the journey. A fly buried itself into his head and, also, and he also suffered a tropical skin disease. Sometimes they were forced to survive by eating whatever they could hide or find. Their diet sometimes consisted of plants, piranha, fish, white cats, and even tortoises. Uh, so I refer back to the question, mm -hmm. what is the cause of Stafford skin disease? Uh, the option A is the scorpion. You see that the, uh, he got stung twice by, by the scorpion, but not the scorpion is the cause of his skin disease. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, thank you, Aisha. Yeah, this is this one is a bit tricky as well. As you could see in the clues given, um, it just stated what happened to Stafford. He was stung by scorpions, a fly buried itself into his head, and he also suffered a tropical skin disease. But it's not mentioned as to how he managed to get the skin disease. So good job, girls. Well okay, done. yeah. So for viewers at home, you can find this one here. There you go. A fly buried itself into his head and he also suffered a tropical skin disease. Yeah, there's no mentioning of the reason. Okay, for our next question, how did the community chief help Stafford and Cho? A, he showed them where to go. B, he agreed to stop the attacks if they left. C. He explained to isolated communities that they weren't a threat. And D. He paid the native people so that they wouldn't harm them. So which one's the answer, girls? And Aisha is A. Adriana is A. He showed them where to go. Is yep. oh, okay, that is, the correct, that is the correct answer. Well done. Definitely. Okay, uh, why is A the answer? Could someone tell me? The A is the answer because mm -hmm. in the fourth paragraph, the last sentence, you see that they avoided an attack by agreeing to pay the community chief to be their guide. Guides means that the community chief showed them where to go, so the answer is A. Okay, thank you. So yes, A is he showed them where to go. It's because the word guide over here is someone who shows somebody else where to go. Right. Okay, that so correct. Well done, well done to both our pupils online. And Ticiliana, can we give them marks for all the correct answers that they have given? Yeah, um, I think because there's four questions, so it's definitely a four over four. They managed oh. to answer everything correctly. A four over four, fantastic. And now we're going to take a short break and we're going to continue reading this text. Do not go anywhere. Stay tuned with us on D-Date TV, KPM.
Didik TV KPM. Back with us on Didik TV KPM. Now you are watching the upper secondary slot, and we are learning English together. And the topic is globe trotting, walking the Amazon. And we are going to give focus on these two questions: Would you or would you not? Hmm. Teacher Liana is going to share with us about these two questions. I'm wondering what are we going to learn, Teacher Liana? Okay, these two questions. It's to bring the focus of our lesson to speaking, because based on our objectives, we should uh, do reading and also speaking. So this is the speaking part of this one. Okay, so would you or would you not? For viewers at home, we are going to ask questions based on the text in page sixty-eight. So you can refer to page sixty-eight as well. Yeah, I have the first question over here. This is actually taken from task E in page 69. Would you like to try what Ed Stafford did? Why, why not? Since it's a question, I have some suggested phrases that you could use when you want to answer. For example, I would like to try because, or I wish I could as I, or I would not dare to, and this is because. Okay, so for viewers at home, you can also use these phrases as you want to answer the question. Okay, so um, Aisha and Adriana, would you like to try this one? Would you like to answer? Yes, teacher. I'll start first. Okay. I would not dare to try like what at step at this. This is because it is simply not my nature to be or go somewhere without. Guaranteed safety, and although I like challenging activities, ac activities that are just dangerous and a risk to myself is a no. <laughs> Very interesting. So, mm -hmm. uh, Adriana loves challenging activities, but not anything that's perilous with trials and tribulations. Yeah, hmm. going to the Amazon with snakes definitely would be uh dangerous a, i would say it's <laughs> a no no for me definitely <laughs> okay thank you adriana what about you aisha for me i really i wish i could try what i started did as i really enjoy extreme and thrilling adventure mm. but i would prefer not to because who wants such a long and dangerous journey is too dangerous for me and i think i could try something less dangerous <laughs> okay, something less dangerous as well. But yeah, going on a journey which is quite different would be something maybe thrilling and exciting to certain people, right? And True. I really admire them for having the bravery and the courage to do that. Yeah, anywhere there are snakes, I wouldn't be there. Ah, so, a yeah. safe choice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next we have this question. Uh -huh, I think I know which one you would prefer, Hanif. Easily. Yeah. Would you rather go for a beach holiday or do extreme activities? Okay, so girls, what's your choice? Oh, wait, wait. Sorry, sorry. Aha. Uh -huh. So for viewers at home, you can use these suggested phrases. I would rather do because or I prefer because. So you can use the word prefer to choose one option that you'd like to have. Okay, sorry girls. Back to you. I prefer a beach holiday over extreme activities because mm -hmm. at times I can be tired of the hustle and bustle of the city life. So to soak up the sun and listening to the waves lapping up on the shore is a fantastic choice. Mm -hmm. How poetic. Yep. <laughs> Thank you, Adriana. And what about you, Aisha? I think my answer is opposite from Yana because mm -hmm. I would rather do extreme activities because I love challenges and thrilling adventure. Well, my family often stop by the beach, so it's just a normal thing for me to do. So I would go to extreme activities instead of beach holiday. Ah, so you would try extreme activities. So good for you, Aisha. I think there's lots that we can try, especially in our country. There's stuff like rafting, kayaking, Okay. Okay, so the next question. Do you know of any other people who have been on incredible expeditions? So viewers at home, you can use this suggested phrases. Yes, this person's name is and she or the other option, yes, although I did not know this person personally, but I heard 
For example, I heard or I read about her or him. Okay, so girls, would you like to try and answer this one? Um, no, I don't, but I'm sure it'd be nice to know one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you, Adriana. What about you, Aisha? Yes, although I didn't know this person personally, but I heard her name is Emilia Mary Yohat. She is the first woman to fly the airplane the globe uh, in 1937. Yahat and her navigator disappeared on July 2, mm -hmm. 1937, I think. Mm. And nearly one year and six months after their disappearance, uh, Yahat was declared dead. And after that, in 1968, her name was included in National Aviation Hall of Fame and in 1973, in National Women's Hall of Fame. Mm. Wow. That's impressive. impressive. So you have read about Amelia, Aisha? Yes, I read a little about, about her. It's so interesting, amazing story. So I like her. <laughs> ah, you like her. The first woman to ever fly. Yes. Okay then. So thank you for your responses. We're going to go to the next one. Oh, sorry. Okay. Can I have a short uh, response from you girls? What can the achievement of Ed Stafford teach us? So anyone? Well, uh -huh. Ed Stafford's achievement taught me that hard work never be cheap, no matter what is the result. But the journey along, uh, but everything that happens along the journey are the most expensive experience. In addition, uh, he also shows me that if you are determined to do something, it will be a success. Okay, being determined to do something. Okay, thank you, Aisha. Now we are going to go to the next question. And okay. this will be the last question right now. Okay, sure. Yep. What are the steps we could take to identify specific information in a text? Because you know, referring to page 68, there's lots of info. So what did you girls do to identify specific information in a text? So anyone? For me, I will make sure to understand the paragraph or text tells about. And if I don't understand the text, I will ask my teacher or my friend to explain it to me. And also, I will find similar words so that it will be easier for me. I see, finding similar words. And yes, reaching out to your teachers and friends. That's a very good tip. Thank you, Aisha. What about you, Adriana? The first steps that I would do is to focus solely on keywords to help um, save more time and also to underline the keywords and information found to avoid any confusions. Okay, thank you, Adriana. Yep, underlining the important text, the important parts. Thank you, girls. Right, those are very good answers from our pupils online. And Teacher Liana, may we have your opinion on their uh, full performance today of answering your questions? Okay, um, I would definitely give it a 10 over 10 for their whole performance because they managed to come up with the correct answers and it's backed up by evidence. And yeah. they know exactly which ones the suitable evidence and points to back up their arguments. That is a, that is great. And I saw, I think it was Aisha who did this, right Aisha? Good Yay. job, I think I'm going to do this for the both of you, <laughs> Aisha and Adriana. Well done. So as teacher Liana said, very critical, very meticulous. And definitely we will want to learn more and teacher Liana. Where can we find more resources if we want to study more? Yeah, you could find more resources in KPM's Sumbaku. There's lots of reading texts for you to explore. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And you're seeing, you're looking at the link on your screen right now. Get on Sumbaku. There's a lot more that you can learn there. And of course, you will want to be as excellent as our two pupils online. So study harder and, and, and definitely work harder. Definitely work definitely. harder, work smarter. And with that, we have come to the end of our session today. And I would like to thank Teacher Liana. Thank you so much for taking us on this journey. I think it was a good journey. There was a good expedition that we had mm -hmm. in the Amazon. 
Yeah, isn't Hanif. it? Yeah, thank you for being with us <laughs> and guiding you. us. I, I really <laughs> enjoyed myself. And of course, thank you to, to Teacher Saiful for being our interpreter today. And our two pupils online, thank you so much for being so energetic, for being fantastic. And our friends at home, thank you so much for paying attention. We definitely hope to see you again. My name is Hanif, Hanif Sean and continue to stay tuned on DDAT TV KPM. I'm going for a travel. Bye guys. <laughs>